Hello, hello everyone. Welcome back to War on the Sea. Just a small update uh, and announcement before we start today with a big apology as to why there hasn't been a War on the Sea episode for a couple of weeks now. And that's simply because I have, of course, been very, very busy. I had my own birthday last week and I was celebrating on the weekend just before that. Um, because that's when we were all free to do so and I have actually been away from my house um, for another weekend as well so just not quite had the time um, but thank you very much for waiting um, to your aim for a great episode today we do have a good few engagements and we're once again going to be put on the back foot and with some horrible decisions to be made so please sit back and enjoy the video See where previously we did sink our second Yamato and that is absolutely amazing if we go to the bottom this very very long list of uh, enemy sinkages we have a total of 98 enemy ships sunk in this campaign we're on day 50 and I think that is absolutely brilliant uh, we have sunk a total of 809,000 tons worth of shipping and that is brilliant as you would expect from multiple battleships and heavy cruisers sunk of course you can see on the single battle of uh, that uh, previous uh, day of the 24th of September, actually just coming out of that now, we uh, did sink, of course, a Yamato, two Sendai's, Akuma, Kagero, Shiratsu, Alba, Tone, Fubuki, and Yugumo. A good 10 stack there of ships. Absolutely disgusting. However, we're not completely without losses ourselves. We did lose a Fletcher, a Benson, and a Portland heavy cruiser. However, that's only on top of three other Fletchers. Oh no, it's not. I'm being a being a bit silly there because we did, of course, lose all of these Clemsons. Lost a few uh, Macaulay merchants. So we've lost some Bensons, some Summers, a few Sims and Benhams as well. So we have lost a lot of destroyers and a few merchant ships on the way. We've lost 20 total ships. Uh, and that's actually rather a lot. That's probably the most I've ever lost in a campaign uh, in total. Uh, but that's absolutely not a problem. We do still have quite a few ships in the dockyard as well. They will be repaired at the end of the day, but uh, the closest one will be the Wichita. That will be coming out in three days, whereas we have a Tennessee, which will take another 29 days, uh, which is rather, rather nasty. But so they're going to be finding some uh, friends in the dockyard. We have this Idaho over here who did take one or two torpedoes in a previous defense. I believe they were attacked by uh, torpedo planes uh, launched from a carrier, of course. Uh, so that's got to go back to rest and repair, leaving Task Force Thunder actually not too bad. Otherwise, we do have some residual damage across the board. And with the Hunters, I think we're going to have to send back the South Dakota as well. And uh, with the loss of the Portland and the rest of the destroyers, we're going to have to uh, reinforce that as quickly as possible, unfortunately. Uh, so, let's tidy up our route. We're going to sneak out this particular direction, just directly away from Guadalcanal before the uh, airfield and such that active in Melissa. And there is not actually one in Melissa, but there is one in Santa Isabel. We do have one in the Shortland Islands. I do believe we did uh, pummel that very early on in the campaign. But uh, we did also destroy an Unru uh, in the previous episode as well in this sort of area with some B-17s, which is excellent. However, not, as, not everything is uh, quite as good as uh, it seems with the enemy losses because we are currently losing slowly the Battle of Guadalcanal over here. You can see the troops stand at 9.3 thousand with a supply support of 15 and a half thousand but the balance of power is not in our favor and that's slowly creeping down towards uh, more favorably for the Japanese. So what are we looking at at the New Hebrides? We do have a couple thousand troops available and I think we're going to have to uh, all aboard with those really. Can we manage cargo from this distance? We certainly can. We will bring all of the troops we can in these two Macaulays at least and we will of course supply them once again with a couple of Archorus. I don't think supplies are currently the problem on Guadalcanal, but we'll bring those up. And I think we'll bring some preemptive engineering and fuel as well, so that when we do eventually win that battle, um, we can just upgrade it as quickly as possible. That's airfield and get a true victory there. So uh, no particular aim in mind for today, just level out and stabilize the Guadalcanal. Uh, wait to get resupplied, get our ships uh, repaired and see what happens uh, with enemy positionings really. Let's get going. 
Well, instantly on the next day, we can see two very nasty looking task forces over here. Our Kingfisher has to go into, I believe it will be the one to notice as a CV. So let's do that straight away because it'd be great to know if there really is a CV out here. And there absolutely is. So a CV or two. And of course, they've launched their planes. We're going to have to say goodbye to this Kingfisher. But we have one, two Unryus, a Nagato, and I did see a second battleship, a Fuso. So, uh, once again, very, very nasty uh, set of uh, ships in this particular task force. Um, we do have a light cruiser, Oyedo, as well. Of course, we've got some uh, destroyers. That's a second Oyedo over there. It certainly is. We have lost our scout there. So, really, I mean, because of the nature of this Let's Play, we are currently doing a ships, surface ships only. No aircraft carriers and no submarines, for those that don't know. Uh, we have to go in with that with brute force somehow. We do have the access to Catalinas and uh, you know anything we get from our land-based airfields. So what we could do, having said that, is use a plane I very often forget about. Go to New Air. I believe actually we get more from Cookton. Uh, we get the Liberators out, and I think what we want to use we go for. What about SAP and AP? Not necessarily bad. We don't quite have the endurance to get over there. That's not a problem. If we use four 1,000 pound AP bombs, they will have the endurance to get over and have a look, won't they? Let's just send them in that direction. That will take six hours to get over there. Uh, so we're going to have to be on it with the scouting. Uh, how many planes do we have free? We have a couple Kingfishers free over here. So we'll send a couple more out there. And we'll send those, just uh, some close range scouts there for now. Well, um, as soon as we celebrate uh, downing two Yamatos in Tosal, the enemy uh, decides to go towards Milne Bay. Luckily, this doesn't appear to be a landing force. However, this is going to be very, very tough once again. As if there's anything else in this game, we have a Heezen in this task force, and that's is uh, yeah, certainly a Yamato on steroids, if you ask me. We do, of course, have a Congo as well to escort it, and as well as a Miyoko over here, and a Takao, of course. So uh, we have spotted this with our bow fighters, uh, launched out to scout around Milne Bay and such. We are going to try and hit something here. We are armed with some very, very minor bombs. Uh, so what exactly do we want to hit? It might just have to be a destroyer or a cruiser here, but uh, the Heezen actually has some very respectable uh, AA batteries there. I believe these double up as the secondaries double up, and we're on Japanese there, as uh, dual purpose guns. Yeah, the 105mm at the back here are dual purpose guns, so that's a lot of flak coming out from the rear. But we're coming in quick. At top speed, we're going to target this to Cal. We're going to go move in straight away. What's the visibility? They're not firing. There we go. It's 53%. They're firing now, absolutely. So let's just break an attack. Unfortunately, we're going to have to go straight in. No need for any fancy maneuvers. This is a throwaway squad at the moment. We'll come back for free. We have, of course, lost a lead plane there just before they drop. And that is one hit. That's absolutely fine. Better than nothing. But what's most important is, of course, the intelligence that we know there is something out here now. And that means what we can do is we can mark that up. And is that... Oh, I thought I would crash onto the uh, order over here. Um, we can mark this up and come in with some heavier weaponry, some heavy bombers. We do have some Mitchells, technically classified as medium bombers, of course. Let's go and retreat and mark this up. So we can see we're trying to avoid all of the attack aircraft likely coming from the double Unruh tassels over here. So that was roughly over here. We'll mark that up. Not a problem. We can send out something else to scout about. Send out some Kitty Hawks. Uh, they do only have a very minor range, but that was not too far at all from Milne Bay. And once we sight that again, we can shadow them and send out a more accurate uh, scouting group and uh, both as a Mitchell task force, I think. Uh, what we can do is actually send us some uh, lightnings with Havars at least to get rid of some destroyers. So we'll come out, uh, if the thing will do as I say, over here. That's actually all of their endurance, that's not a problem. 
I'll scout that out. Still Liberators, that's the Mariners. Liberators still taking quite a while to come in here. Uh, we only have six B-17s available, but it's best than nothing. I think we'll launch them soon. But of course, we can't escape aircraft forever. We'll see where they pop in. Yep, this is all of the dive bombers coming in. It is Vows. They are armed with light bombs, of course, but we are going to need to turn around. We'll turn the Juno around especially so that it can get all of its guns facing the enemy. Turn out, get the Warrington out on this area as well. And the Bagley, so that we do get more flak firing out. We do get some invasive maneuvers off for the more vulnerable ships, of course. We have got some smoke out. It looks like we're firing at an incoming zero over here. Might want to change that. That's really not so much of an issue. So we'll have to take off also fire flak. And what we'll do is a focus fire on the first group over here. We'll see if our guns have started turning. Uh, looks over here like what's happened is they've just ceased. There we go. No, come on. You can see them. There we go. No, that's very interesting. We're not going to get any flak out, are we? Hmm. Might just have to turn on also fire once again then. Make sure that zero goes past. And they will fire onto the valves when they come into range. Well, I think that is pretty much the attack done and dusted there. No, the one was just trying to drop on the Colorado. You can see in the message box over here, I can't drag that unfortunately, um, but there is only the one contact with the bomb there. It was a dud. We did, of course, shoot down. I'm pretty sure that was actually all of the enemy vows there. But I'm sure there'll be a second wave. And on, oh, it says uh, 12 of 25. So something else is coming in. I'm sure that's the case we can see on the map. <laughs> so I'm sure we'll be joined by those very shortly. And absolutely it's the case coming in here. So there should be another group of 12, but we can see a second group even further behind on the strategic map. So this will not be the end of it. Um, we are going to have to turn around, of course. Now, hmm, the question is here because Kates are of course harder to dodge than Vows. They have a better hit rate as far as I'm concerned. Colorado is absolutely going to have to go full speed, full grand speed of 21 knots. We're gonna move out this way ever so slightly, present a narrow profile with um, also trying to present some secondary gun fire towards the enemy so they can produce some flak. Philadelphia can come out, try and turn around as quickly as possible. Gridley can come out as well. Just scatter so that we're not bunched up for a massive group of torpedoes to hit us um, as they go by stray, of course. So it looks like we're firing out. Uh, it should be the leading group over here. Certainly is. Now, Flak, unfortunately, at long range, just doesn't quite do the job. And we're certainly feeling uh, the effects of having less small arms and Flak about because we're lacking in destroyers and some heavy crews and such after saying goodbye after previous battles and damages and such. Mm -hmm. Bus in there. Come round here. Make sure the bagel is turning round, actually, so we do avoid a collision. Let's slow down a tad. O'Bannon should be turning a little harder out here. So far I think we're presenting quite a nice target for them actually thinking about this now. That's moving a little too far inwards there. I think we'll bring this out just a tad. Savannah. Hmm, how are we going? 
so that Simon needs a turn out a tad. Increase his speed once again. Looks like this group might well be going for either Savannah or this particular Baglin. Turning out though, that will avoid this group, I think. Need to turn around over here. Yeah, that's going for the Savannah who needs to now slow down and turn in a tad. Can't see that torpedo strip just over here, so if we just turn and turn our speed down is what I'm trying to say. Looks like Juno may well get hit because we've neglected that. Yeah, that's seriously taking a torpedo or two there. Looks like they're very, very closely dropped, unfortunately. Yeah, that's two massive hits on the bow. Slowing down here as well. I think we're taking some on this ship over here. We're not watching out, are we? It looks like the Colorado needs a turn as well. Because that's going to be taking a hit. This will be a downed Bagley, unfortunately. Look at all that damage on the bow of that ship. Might as well have torn that off. Looks like we did down some planes going for the Colorado. Going to have to watch out for Philadelphia as well. That needs to turn out and away because of this torpedo stream over here. You see, just on my cursor. In fact, that should be fine if it just maintains top speed. So Juno can stop. Complete stop. Bagley needs a complete stop. Not that we will be able to recover from that. Now. The unfortunate thing is I did issue some lightnings out to protect our task force over here from the New Hebrides, but because that's so far away, unfortunately the uh, lightnings are still en route. Well... Um, neither our neither of our ships which were hit have actually gone down or scuttled. However, we are going to have to send those back, unfortunately, because uh, especially the Juno, uh, because the uh, magazine compartment on the front of the bow of the ship is permanently damaged and flooded. We've lost the use of our bow face and guns completely there until they get repaired. Uh, so that's rather rather unlucky there. And it was the Bagley as well. Of course we're moving away with this entire fleet and task force, so they'll stay for the minute to provide what support they might be able to against this uh, group of Kates as well. You can see the lightning is still quite a way away there, um, which is just very, very sad. We'd love it if we got some fighters from Reynolds Island, but unfortunately that is only ever scouts and uh, you know larger scouts aircraft there. So quite the shame, but not to worry. South Dakota is making their way home, but we do have some reinforcements in the form of two destroyers and a Pensacola coming for the hunters there. So hopefully that can replenish some strength there. We will just uh, stay on the back foot, unfortunately, uh, for some decent time. Well, on the 26th of September at 1632 hours, our Task Force 24, our major supplies task force, has come over to Guadalcanal. And we are sceptical at whether this will make a difference. We've dropped down to 5.9 thousand troops and 13.7 thousand supplies over here. You can see the balance of power nowhere near in our favour at all. But we are going to drop all of our cargo off here. And that actually has made a reasonable difference there. We're now at 10.2 thousand troops and 17.4 thousand supplies. And that has bumped the balance of power quite far up actually we'll see where that shifts of course at the turn of the next day but uh, otherwise that's fairly hopeful fingers crossed for that to progress in our favor now because that'd be a major milestone done and dusted there however i've been uh, warned by one of the uh, main mod creators that uh, taking guadalcanal will up the ante uh, so we'll see exactly what that means when we do finally take it but uh, i'm not liking the prospect at the moment after seeing what uh, the enemies brought out only today. Okay guys, so it's now the 27th of September and our supply task force has successfully escaped uh, the clutches of Guadalcanal. You can see the enemy is very, very heavily patrolling that area. Um, we have 
two possible battleship task forces patrolling and following us down here. We've just scouted out what was uh, denoted as a battleship task force in this position. This is in fact a very minor task force led by two heavy cruisers once again with just a handful of destroyers. Um, so I'm very happy to take that fight. However, that will put us into uh, a good position for this particular task force to intercept us. So I just want to double check exactly what we have over here. So we're going to scout this out. What do we have? Can we see anything? We certainly can. It's a larger task force, I think. But very similar composition. They have three Oyodos by the looks of things and two Mogamis. So rather a toughie once again because these Oyodos do have some very rapid firing guns. 150 mils, two triple mounts there. Uh, does of course make them, they're the light tonne of course, they do have uh, zero main battery guns on the rear of the ship. So I think we're very happy to take this one as well. Oh actually I did notice that we were in fact in range there. That was actually quite a shame because we would have outranged uh, at least the light cruisers with our battleships and heavy cruisers there. So that was a mistake uh, to not notice that. We'll keep our Kingfisher here in the general area though and we will actually try and take this fight I think. Um, because uh, that will be rather favourable. Even if we can just get uh, the heavy cruisers out of the way, maybe even one Oido, we can then at least retreat and cut any uh, outgoing damage or incoming rather towards our own ships there, is what I'm thinking. That should stop them from pursuing us quite so hard if we get rid of the lead ships. But we'll see what happens. We'll push him. And that should bring us right on top of them. And in fact, we are right on top of them. You can see the enemy right on the horizon there, bearing 301. Um, but this is not the task force we just looked at immediately. This is the one I said I scouted before, and that's actually somewhat more favorable for us to take simply because there's fewer ships. We have a Takao and a Miyoko leading. We have a Sendai as well as four destroyers. So this is much more favorable for us, and we certainly can. I think we get a broadside, of course. Uh, but we're going to try and come to the rear to begin with. We will increase our speed to uh, a good 33 knots. And what we're going to do is we're going to take a quick second to identify the ships we want to fire to get some firing orders out. So we do have some firing orders out. We're just going to try and fit around with our formation, get the standard line ahead, which we've been liking in previous battles, going out to a starboard turn over here to cross the team, maybe get some torpedoes out in that direction, and also free up our center line for uh, some broadsides. We can see we do have our um, two heavy cruisers going for the Takao over here. With some decent uh, solution already built up there, we do have our Montana going for the Miyoko, I believe, and we are focusing some lighter guns on to the Ford Fubuki and what we believe to be an Asashio over here. So I'm fairly confident uh, with the spread out but still somewhat concentrated firepower we can fire out and get some good hits in and destroy these enemy ships very quickly. They are focusing towards our Montana over here as you can see which is very very nasty indeed of course. Uh, looks like that Takao actually is moving very very slowly actually we can see we've got our secondaries onto the Kagura there so we're going to go to a hold fire and try and look towards that to cow because if it is going very slowly we can get a very nice manual shot over there despite the fact that we're not necessarily aiming at that with our directors with our Montana at the moment I think we can just take a very cheeky um, shot over there ourselves. We are taking very heavy damage onto the Hillary P. Jones already. That's very sad to say because that is a fresh destroyer uh, brought specifically to reinforce this particular task force. We can see that's a cow. Yep, that's taking some very, very nice shots already indeed because of the very, very close distance of 11.1 kilometers there. That is almost point blank. We've had closer, <laughs> we know we've had closer very recently, but that Takao is taking some very, very good shots once again. So I'm very happy with that. Hillary P. Jones is flooding as well as on fire. We are aiming with our secondary zones with Kagado just to reinstate that. Uh, but the, we're losing the bow over here, so we're going to move over some damage control parties to directly deal with the fires. Um, otherwise, not so worried about the general compartments. Looking at our own formation though, I think we're going to want to turn around within your leans, try and get a broadside somehow this Montana because it's a shame to uh, 
leave the two rear turrets, isn't it? The two rear gun turrets out there. Move out of the Atlanta so we can actually fire with all of our guns once again. And we're looking at a possible collision with a particular ship over here, the port. So we're going to turn, uh, just turn that a little steeper uh, to our starboard side. And that might have to do a full circle round two were fully engaged properly. That's not going to be a problem. As long as we don't cause any own friendly fire. We can see the enemy is causing some sort of flooding on our bow of the Montana, which is rather nasty. But so long as that doesn't pile up, we can keep on top of it. A massive explosion on the Takao there, which is absolutely brilliant. It's what we love to see very, very close with our shots there. I'm just trying to figure out if those gun turrets here are still active. They might just be causing their reload there. Yeah, we can see something firing out. They are still very much active. That is very much a shame. And what else do we find? What are we doing over here? The Sendai, they're doing not doing too much against these destroyers, I think. Uh, so we're going to have to change around, make sure we are firing properly. Do you have a decent solution to that, Fibberkey? I'm not entirely sure why the guns aren't firing too well on that, but we are going to try and get some torpedoes out because they are moving straight towards us. Kagero has suffered a magazine explosion. Always miss these things. <laughs> but not to worry there. We know that's going to go down fairly soon. We'll keep firing at that um, just to make sure it does go down that much quicker. And we want to fire straight into the enemy formation if they are um, coming straight at us like that so with our torpedoes. We'll see if they're quick enough to actually get there. Have lost all of our secondaries onto the Montana though, um, so that's going to make us think about uh, sending that home to repair those because there's also a loss of AA flank. Um, unfortunately that means that we did have to re-target the Takao over there. Uh, very strange that uh, losing the secondaries doesn't automatically go over to the primary focus there. Something you need to keep in mind. So we're going to do the same with our heavy cruisers as well. And the Atlanta doesn't seem to be doing too well, actually not firing at all, is it? That's very, very strange. Just double check the range there. We, we are in range. Makes you wonder what's going on there, but we'll come back to that later. Sure, we're overlooking something quite simple, but the damage on the Helio P. Jones is getting softer. We're getting there, keeping on top of the fires. Just make sure we're on top of that properly. We are firing out towards a destroyer there because we're not having too much impact so far with our own destroyers. Montana, once again, how are you doing? How just fired out? You can see some smoke coming out. Uh, let's see. Pretty much dead in the water is this to count. Yeah, look at that. So how are we getting on? The Kagero has of course sunk, the Takao has sunk. It did suffer a magazine explosion, which we did miss unfortunately. Always miss those bloody things when it happens to the enemy. The Miyoko is pretty much dead in the water, so we're going to get, I think, another mangle shot out there. But we are straddling that still with our current firing orders with the Montana. We are also firing on, on the Sendai finally with our two heavy cruisers. It looks like they're getting some good hits in. That is smoking quite heavily already and that does look like it's crawling pretty much. Fubuki and the Asatria are doing quite well. That was a massive explosion. I almost said that was a magazine explosion, but there's no word text message uh, to say that and to confirm that. But yeah, look at this Miyoko here. Let's get some guns out there. That's actually just sunk. So we'll take that off, we'll hold, and we will just finish off that Sendai because the Fubuki's going down, that's excellent. So just here, Sashio over here now. So what we'll do is we'll take the Atlanta over because that's got to take the top honours for destroying that uh, Fubuki there. And that will be a very, well, fairly clean, decent uh, win there, I think. Very nice service engagement. Clears up some room around Guadalcanal, of course. Gives, some breathing, gives us some uh, breathing space around Renault Island. But we do have to think about whether we want to immediately take the follow-up engagement um, from that other group we saw. However, we do actually need, that's why this uh, ship wasn't perhaps firing, we're very, very low on ammunition. We haven't actually restocked from previous battles. So we're gonna have to do that, I think, before we do take another engagement. Uh, we need to fire out with the Montana, because we're holding. Very nice there, lovely stuff. Lovely stuff indeed. How are we doing against the Asashio? Uh, we're getting some hits in, we're getting some hits in. 
have to double check and clarify if this is in fact a Masashi, uh, Masashi, sorry, uh, a Sashio. It's definitely not a Masashi, bloody hell, that would be very different. Massive, massive hits onto the Sendai though, look at that. And that might be what's just sinking now, it does appear to be the case. Yeah, Sendai and Fubuki is sinking, excellent. So, just this one ship left. And there we go. Very nice little victory there. Just what we need to perk up our spirits after the horrible air attacks previously. So 11 command points again. That will go towards, I think, just some more destroyers at the moment. Uh, so we can reinforce other task forces and such. Maybe even swap up the muscle. We'll double check the damage on that. Uh, but Hillary P. Jones actually did all right at the end of that. So we could have to think about sending the Montana back at least just to get uh, access to our secondaries. Because that's also a defense we're lacking there but still fairly serviceable right now as things go and we are absolutely going to have to retreat back to Renault Island to resupply our ammo at least before we take this fight however that is unfortunately all we have time for today ladies and gentlemen thank you very much for watching once again I hope you have enjoyed the video but I shall have to see you in the future may all of your nights and days be auspicious goodbye